good news. There may now be, coming soon, an internationally applicable prognostic index for patients with chronic lymphocytic leukemia. And I am with Dr. Nadine Kuch, who is the Center of Integrated Oncology at the University Hospital in Cologne, and also from the International CLL IPI Working Group. Now, there's an established clinical strategy for uh, CLL, right, a staging system. But we need something more than that. Yeah, because um, they've been developed more than 30 years ago. And um, in times of novel therapies and um, improved prognosis, they don't discriminate enough anymore. So um, for the patient nowadays, it's pretty important because we have so many therapeutic um, uh, possibilities that um, we have to figure out whom to treat how. Makes perfect sense. So what you did is you've done a very large meta-analysis. Yeah. So how many patients did you look at? About 3,500 patients from five countries um, that were all patients from phase three trials. And then we externally validated them over a prospectively collected patient cohort from Mayo Clinic, which was about um, 850 patients. So you have about 26 different factors you think you've now identified? Um, actually, the um, um, analysis we did found out that only five factors are statistically uh, significant. So you looked at 26? We looked at nearly all factors that have been, um, or all factors that have been um, um, evaluated within clinical phase three trials. So um, we checked on everything there is, and statistically, statistically significant were only five factors. What were they? They were um, TP53 status, IGHV status, meter to M level, clinical stage and age. So how would this work in practice? Um, in practice, um, this separates four different risk groups and um, ranging from low to very high risk. And for the low risk, we would only follow a watch and wait approach. For the intermediate risk, we would only treat symptomatic patients for the high-risk groups, we would treat everybody except for asymptomatic patients. And the very high-risk group is supposed not to respond to chemoimmunotherapy or chemotherapy anymore. So we would follow more experimental approaches. And we would like to evaluate the high and very high-risk group within um, clinical trials. I mean, these prognostic indexes can be really helpful in guiding therapy. And that's, a, that's where yeah, you're hoping exactly. to go with this. Yeah. In terms of when this might get published? Because right now it's just been presented here at uh, ASCO. When do you think it's going to be published? At the moment we're preparing the manuscript, so hopefully late summer or Late fall. summer, early fall, that makes yeah. perfect sense. And so until then, right now what we have is the idea that this could be an internationally applicable prognostic index exactly. in a very important group of people. Yeah. But I want to thank you very much for your time because this is an important topic and hopefully we'll, uh, we'll see more and read more about it fairly soon, maybe summer or uh, in the fall. And for ASH Clinical News, we have a variety of reports from uh, this particular meeting, so please look around for those. I'm Rick McGuire here in Chicago.